Kelly Kemper. I live in New York City, uh, where the Statue of Liberty is in the Empire State Building. Um, también hablo español. Viví en México por casi 10 años, hace ya más de 20 años. Eh, pero no voy a continuar en español porque eh, tengo una falta de vocabulario. Pero quizá más tarde, cuando hacemos preguntas, voy a intentar en español. Um, antes de que comenzamos, uh, I had a question for everyone. Uh, who here is an entrepreneur? And who here is a coder? Anybody write code? Uh, one other question. How, uh, who here is over the age of 25? All right. Um, when I lived in Mexico, pre-94, uh, it was pre-NAFTA. Um, this neighborhood didn't exist at all. That was only 20 years ago. Today, we've got all these buildings, all this internet pipe, and we actually have internet, something we didn't have 20 years ago. A lot of us here have iPhones and tablets. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about today is thinking big and thinking about change. I see a tendency across a lot of entrepreneurs to think locally and think uh, about solving current problems. But a lot of what being an entrepreneur is, is thinking about the future, solving a problem that doesn't yet exist and thinking about something that may exist in five years. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about lots of different opportunities. I'm going to talk about myself. Um, I'm going to talk about some companies that we've invested in over the course of the past 10 years. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit on folding, funding alternatives. Although I will say I did delete about five or six slides based on the presentations that I saw for the past two hours. And then we'll have Q&A uh, for anyone who has any questions. Uh, before we start, I wanted to thank the folks at Campus Party, uh, Tommaso for bringing us down here uh, and for organizing all of this. So about a year ago, the founder of Netscape, uh, Netscape came out in 1993 as the first internet browser, wrote an article in the Wall Street Journal about why software is eating the world. And he has a quote that I live by and I think about which is, for internet-based companies, the game is only truly beginning now. Um, so the last 15 years have, have been super interesting. Uh, we've seen a lot of great companies, companies like Yahoo come about, uh, GeoCities, early business models that some were proven, some were unproven. But from my vantage point, the next 10 to 20 years are going to be more interesting. Um, I put up this slide here because I'm a big fan of kiteboarding. So are a lot of entrepreneurs, the founders of Google, uh, amongst others. And what's interesting about kiteboarding is it's a high-speed sport. You're allowed to fly. So these guys are on flat water, and they're using the power of the wind to hurl themselves in the air. The sport's about 10 years old, uh, and each year it gets more and more progressive. People are jumping higher and higher. Unfortunately, none of these is me. I can only jump about this high, but I intend to jump higher someday. But interestingly, uh, as time goes on, about a year ago, uh, someone got to a new high. The highest jump that I had ever seen was about 10 meters, which is pretty high. Last year, a group of Brits decided to jump over this pier, um, probably 30 plus meters, uh, and they landed safely on the other side. So the question for me and the question for you is, how high are they going to be jumping in the next two to three to four or five years? So why be optimistic? Um, Vivek runs Singularity University on the West Coast, uh, which is a university organized for entrepreneurs about thinking big. Most people in the world have been affected by advances in computing and mobile technologies. In a short 15 years, the internet has changed the way we work, shop, communicate and think. Knowledge, which used to be only available to the elite classes through books such as Encyclopedia Britannica, is today abundant and free. Think Wikipedia. All of this happened because computing power is growing exponentially. The technology industry knows this growth as Moore's Law.
although we had a tough couple years five years ago, we're getting over it. A lot of people were laid off from their jobs in 2008, 2009, um, and a lot of those people decided to start companies. So we really are in an area of innovation and unprecedented boom. Sometimes call it the, the golden age of innovation. Over the past 10 years, we've seen some interesting stuff. I think we've just seen the beginning of it. Social media and networking is just getting started. The human genome mapping product is really, really just at its earliest stages. The Y generation, net natives, many of you who are under 25, you've never experienced life without an iPhone, without a laptop, without an iPad. Cloud computing, uh, the ability to use Amazon Web Services to launch your business, test your business without having to buy a server. Nanotechnology and broadband. All of these things have come about in the handful of the most recent years and all of this will create an explosion of entrepreneurship over the next 10 years. By 2015, it's estimated that there will be one trillion connected devices. I have no idea what one trillion looks like, but I know it's a lot. Imagine people with pacemakers monitored directly to wireless systems. In the not too distant future, cars will run on 64-bit multi-core processors and drive themselves, possibly. No more needing a taxi to get lost. The car will do that for you. And the future that IBM believes will be dominated by this concept of a system of systems where software scales to devices on its own. The 2000s saw Google becoming one of the most powerful companies in the world because it helped get a grip on sprawling content. Today, Skype, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter are all connecting every person on the planet. 10 years ago, Skype was launched and now connects 300 million people on a monthly basis. Over 2 billion Skype users in total. LinkedIn, also about 10 years, reaches 225 million people. Facebook, a little bit more recent, has 1.1 billion users and is probably the largest and most consuming site on the web. And Twitter, only seven years, seems to be dominating this conference from what I see, reaches 250 million users on a daily basis and constantly breaks news of Osama bin Laden's uh, uh, death or of the uprises in Egypt, completely dismantling the news industry. Picture it. 12 years ago, none of these companies existed. The things that we spend all of our time on today are brand new companies in the scheme of things. So it used to be that when I joined the venture business in 2000, we focused on what was a $50 billion software industry. And that defining that software industry was primarily the US, and it was people like SAP and software that sold to large enterprises. Today, because of companies like this, it's really a global opportunity. We can reach two plus billion people on broadband devices around the world, not just in the United States, but here in Mexico, in Turkey, in France, in China. That's really now a $15 trillion GDP. Again, I started in this business 13 years ago and I invested in what was a $50 billion market. And now, across venture as a whole, across innovation, we're talking about $15 trillion in opportunity. It's a massive difference. A lot of you have seen this slide before. The cost to start a company is dirt cheap. Uh, not only has the opportunity for innovation grown dramatically, but the cost to launch a business within this massive opportunity has come close to zero. In 2000, when it was a $50 billion market, it cost $5 million just to build a piece of software, let alone test it or see if anyone